Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to The Sabbath Show. And today we've got the Carlton Collingwood review um, where Carlton fell short by about four points. Um, obviously, I'm gutted. Um, was it the game? Epic scenes, 80,000 in the game. Collingwood dominated, but, you know, Carlton presence there nonetheless. Um, fans were vocal, came down to the wire. Um, you know, you can't win them all. And um, for the first time this season, it really feels like we were on the wrong side of a really close game. Um, and basically nearly fought it out to the end. So we we were basically playing that opponent role that we, you know, are usually subjected to, um, where our opposition, you know, gets back into a game but can never finish the, um, you know, the comeback. And uh, we weren't able to do that either. So there you have it. Um, we look at just big extraction points. Jacob Wiedering out is going to be huge. Um, huge problem. Um, it was today and it will be in the next few weeks. It's an AC joint because it was one of those injuries where you're, you know, basically shoulder to shoulder, running full pelt, um, you intercept, and, you know, the contact is very forceful. So, um, Wiedering came off second best, and um, probably the biggest nightmare for Blue supporters has um, come to fruition. Um, best defender gone, and um, that just adds to our injury woes in that department. So Lewis Young is probably the mainstay. Um, Marchbank, I know he's injured, but um, he could be a possibility in the in the next few weeks. Brody Kemp is probably the best and most suitable option, and I think the mid mid season draft is where we need to target someone else to fill the void because, I mean, it's just ridiculous at this point how many injuries we're picking up, um, and it's really hindering our opportunity for you know you know, advancing into, you know, becoming one of those teams that are making the jump this season, you know, getting 15 wins or something like that. I'm not saying we're going to get 15 wins, but games like today, we possibly could have picked up the W. I mean, I reckon we would have if, um, you know, we had a full strength team, you know, Harry Mackay at one end, Wiedering at another, Zachy Williams off halfback. You know, a lot of players are running out there today that don't deserve it. Jack Nunes, I mean, send him on a one-way flight to the moon and don't let him come back because... I mean, some of his moments today were, you know, as much as some of them were, you know, good moments, there were, you know, a lot more uh, bad moments. They easily outweighed the good. So, um, you know, just kicks off the side of the boot, you know, stuff like that. That shouldn't be happening. Um, another key observation from another winger of ours, Matty Cottrell, um, did get some praise um, in the last few weeks, but he just got absolutely taught a lesson by a 200 or 300 game in in steel side bottom. Um, you know, he had a couple chances, especially in the third quarter, where side bottom just got let off the leash. Um, and basically, you know, he was free roaming. He was owning that outer side wing. And basically, you know, I think he had a couple shots on goal in the third quarter and it was basically a byproduct of, you know, Cottrell not being accountable or needing to come into the middle because other midfielders weren't working hard enough. And that just opened up the outer side and, you know, the rest was history. So I think that's really what it comes down to today for Carlton. It's just a bit of a work rate issue, a bit of an effort issue. I mean, so many times they attacked the corridor. We made, you know, we were made to look silly, basically. Looked, you know, a step behind it at all times. Um, every single time there would be moments where, you know, simple handball and they were out. They were out. And it looked like it was, I don't know how this happened, and in no alternate universe should this be happening. Um, there was an out number for Collingwood, or in Collingwood's favour, in their own forward line. Like, they had players streaming to towards goal, and our players just weren't working hard enough defensively. And, you know, I mean, we were, we were trying to run offensively, but then, you know, getting back, we'd committed so much to the offensive side that the defensive side was useless and, and um, heavily exposed. So... You can attribute a lot of their goals to exactly that, especially in the second half where, yeah, it just looked like we, you know, were tired, really tired. Um, so that's a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done in that department. Um, I do want to, you know, put the spotlight on Paddy Cripps because I think his work ethic um, in the last quarter, it picked up a little bit. But, you know, I think he was very lethargic in the first three quarters. There were times where he could have attacked the ball full pelt, no hesitation, and just didn't decide to go for it. Um, there were times where his man would just bolt 
Dugowie a couple times, that was his direct opponent, and he just burst out of the stoppage, Dugowie, and got the ball, and I think there was one time where he got a goal off the centre bounce, purely because Kripa wasn't willing to work, so there you have it, um, Adam Saad, I reckon, speaking of pace, we'll, we'll talk about him just a little bit, I mean, his, his decision making, his, uh, his work rate, his one-on-one contests and wins were exceptional today, um, that attacking prowess as well, especially in that last two minutes where he, he um, was the facilitator of that that um, that um goal that JSOS got and ultimately had us with the extra number in the forward line. Um, that was all on him because he took the game on and he was very composed as much as, you know, he was being very risky with his game style. He was very composed and, um, you know, fought off a few, a few tacklers and, um, yeah, was the result, you know, he was the guy that created that goal. He was the catalyst. We look at other players. Um, Paddy Dow coming into the team. I think he was pretty good. He had 15 handballs out of his 21 possessions. Um, so you get an idea of what type of disposal he was getting. His kicking efficiency was a bit dodge. So, um, yeah, I don't know if he'll, he'll hold his spot next week. Um, obviously, there's been players worse than him. Um, so, yeah. Backline, I think you give credit. TDK... I mean, wasn't awful. Had Darcy Cameron and Mason Cox in the ru- Mason Cox actually looked all right in this game. Like for the first time this season, he actually looked a bit threatening because we had no tools to go with him. Um, so that was a bit shit. Um, also, you know, really falling into that trap once again. I mean, we can't help it because we have Smalls um, basically dominating our forward line, but just sitting the ball on small forwards' head, um, that doesn't really make any sense. But you get what I'm saying? I mean, the amount of times that Durden was the option that we were kicking to, always was the option we were kicking to. I mean, these guys are going to get absolutely thrown around against, you know, the likes of Maynard and um, one time, I reckon, yeah, Jeremy Howe was the guy, direct opponent on Matty Owe. So you're really getting an idea of the size mismatches here. And, and obviously we can't work that, but what we can do is with our delivery, just short and sharp and low. And if you can't do that, you just got to get it out in front. Because once it hits the deck, we've seen like players such as Corey Durden um, who can just gather that ball full pelt um, on the bounce. Even half ollies, like, that doesn't really phase him. And he just hits the ground running as soon as he gather- gathers that footy. And no one can catch him. Um, but the problem was we weren't really looking for that game. It was always kick mark down the line or attempting to do that. It never really worked. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Um, Matty always did nothing until he kicked two goals in the last quarter, which was, I mean, good he hit the scoreboard, but you know, still, um, not grouse. Durden and Motlop combined for two as well. So four goals from your three small forwards, especially when Charlie was getting ganged up on every single possession. Two on one's not in his favor. You know, you needed the small forwards to step up. And, um, if you look at goal scoring averages, it, it didn't really work out that way. So yeah, um, look, I, as I said, I think it was more about the way we went about it at the start of the game. I think that really set up, you know, what this game was going to end up being. I mean, we came out of the gate and it didn't look like we were on point from the first bounce. Um, we're missing a lot of players and some of these players just should not be getting a spot in the team. But in saying that, there are things we can control and work rate is one of those things and it didn't feel like we were switched on in that department um, pretty much all day long. There are, you know, a number of things we could have controlled as well. I mean, it's very clear that um, the corridor usage by the opposition is heavily utilised, especially when you're playing us, um, because that's an area we get exposed in. And as I said before, Collingwood had extra numbers in their forward line because they were using that avenue um, to goal. We just couldn't keep up looking like clowns. We weren't sticking tackles. I mean, until the last quarter where the intensity seemed to lift, you know, the tackles weren't sticking a lot of the time. Umpires also were really dodge. I mean, just, yeah, consistency is just a a real struggle. I mean, I'm going to say it for both ways because, you know, um, it would be me being biased if I just said, while well, Carlton got stitched up. Well, we did. We did get stitched up pretty pretty big time. Um, especially that Walshy call in the final three seconds of the game. That could be pretty contentious. But, um, 
you know, some tackles, I mean, just incorrect disposals and they weren't being paid as incorrect disposals. So it, it just varies game to game and you don't actually know, you know, what to scream out for as a fan. You don't know whether something's holding the ball because, you know, it changes game by game, the uh, interpretation of that. So there's no secret about that. Game's difficult to umpire. Game's difficult to watch in that regard. But as far as the game went from, you know, a thrill standpoint, um, it was a very watchable spectacle. So very good that 80,000 people got in. It was an absolute cracker. These two teams will face off again in round 23, um, which I'm excited for. Um, hopefully it obviously brings, you know, something similar in terms of product, on-field product um, that we saw today. But Next week, Carlton do not play anyone. And I think that's very good for the heart because I just need a little bit of a break from it all. Um, we may be doing like a little mid-season review. So if you want to stay tuned for that, drop a like and subscribe. Um, these, you know, weekly reviews will be happening throughout the season though, um, all the way through to season's end. So if you want to stick around for that, you know, do the usual things to stay notified. But that's going to be it from me. So make sure to drop a like, subscribe. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.